We've been working on the Brooks overhaul now at the bottom end probably for about six months. And the loco was outside initially, now we've brought it into the workshops and we've done quite some significant work on it. Uh, the first job to do is to raise it off its wheels. We needed to assess some of the situation with the um, bottom end of the locomotive, see how worn it is, um, how much work it actually needs doing. Um, since we've managed to do that, we've done quite a lot of work um, on this assessment and we've realised um, the jobs that need doing and we've started to draw up um, a job list and start to make some changes to the, to the work we need to do. Um, since we started working on the frames of the locomotive, um, jobs have included um, measuring um, of the wear of certain components, We've also been stripping away the paint, such as on this buffer beam here, and while we've been doing that, we've also been finding out a few more jobs that might need doing, such as here on the running board, where there was corrosion between the plates. We've had to uh, push those apart, and we've had to clean out the corrosion so that it doesn't spread any further. One of the first things that we needed to do was to um, take off the, the springing on the locomotive. Um, basically, effect uh, provides the uh, suspension for the locomotive. These springs here have been um, under quite a lot of wear for quite a lot of time. Um, and obviously, whenever the locomotive moves over track, the springing moves with it. As a result of that, holes in the springs themselves in the frames where they're attached to the locomotive and also the pins which go between those have got significantly worn. This pin once started out life parallel, it's now got some significant grooving in it. Um, one of the key things it needs to do um, is we need to make a new pin here which is parallel. We also need to make the holes in this parallel which is the hanger for the spring, which sits in there like this. The final thing to do is also to make the holes in the frames of the locomotive parallel. They've had to be drilled out, they've had new bushes made, and once these pins are completed and the new hangers are completed, then we will fit the whole assembly together and the locomotive can go back on its wheels. This is just really indicative of some of the problems that we face when we're overhauling a locomotive. And having been built in wartime, some of the materials that are used for the locomotive that it's made from aren't actually very good quality. Some of the things we're gonna to have to look at, such as pins wearing and so on, will we be replacing them with, with a modern equivalent that's a lot better? Some of the other issues which we might face is that we don't actually have plans and drawings for all these components. So what we have to do is we have to look at the, what we've got already, we have to think about the sizes that it's most appropriate to make it, and we have to make it best fit for the, uh, for the locomotive. And so its, uh, it's future life is well, is well uh, documented, and also that it's sustainable for the future. It won't wear out again, hopefully. So these are the uh, horn guides which actually guide the axle boxes which the locomotive runs in. Um, the bolts which you can see there, um, unfortunately one is missing, actually secure these horn guides. Um, so where this bolt has been fitting in here is actually a specially machined bolt that allows um, everything to be held in place fully. What needs to happen here is the bolt actually needs to be replaced, it needs to be specially machined, it needs to be hammered home and a nut fitted on the outside. This sounds like quite a simple job, but it's not. Again, we don't necessarily have measurements and drawings for the original parts, and a lot of these dimensions here could also have got quite worn. So we need to do quite a lot of work to make this right. Once that is right, we'll be able to put the axle back underneath the horn guide. We'll be able to fit the axle box around, which is effectively like the main bearing that the locomotive runs on, and we'll be able to bring the loco back down on its wheels. Um, once that's done, there's quite a lot of work to be done cleaning up the wheels like we have on the frames here and repainting them also checking um, that the tyres which the locomotive runs on are the right thickness um, and that everything will pretty much go in the place that it should do when everything's back together. Um, the springs we talked about earlier will then be fitted underneath the axles um, and inside the frames the valve gear which runs the locomotive will also be refitted.